In many parts of Africa, people with albinism live like castaways in their own homes. They are highly stigmatized within local communities. While albinism is a genetic condition, the phenomenon remains widely misunderstood. Their physical appearance is often subject to superstitious beats, especially in the sub-Saharan region. Tonkolili is a district located in the northern province of Sierra Leone. Here we meet Ibrahim, father to a son living with albinism. Raising a child in a community that has not been receptive of him since birth is quite a task. The time I give birth to Ismail, there are people who ask me, what kind of child is this? Yes, there are people going to concept that when you give birth to an albino, neither is a form of uh, a devil or somebody who cannot mingle with different people. And in those days, they have the perception that these people, when you give birth to them, they cannot die. When they get old, they will just lose. They might bring in some talks that is take our mind deeply, which does go down well with we, especially with the parents. When they had some words, their colleagues say to them, look at you, you write like this way. Let's try to put in some arrogant words against them, which is, you know, it's a challenge try to stop this situation and will not be everywhere. Ishmael was being somewhere else where his father or mother would not be around. So you face these challenges. People with albinism in Sierra Leone face multiple human rights challenges. They are constant victims of discrimination, exclusion and social marginalization. Let them help me for it is because what's in day when they help her, in picking the now pass in granny nine na pen granny back in door o pass me man na in go dey help them for let them go school let them help if he is door open because some people in this when they fall around but they no go able to talk to run one two three days they don't come up here so pass the help and for let him is open if he then they get a chance they let him is open for me. Thank you, Prabhu Kudem, better, better one. Even. Opoto, Opoto, any side where they go, then they Prabhu Kudem. Opoto, Opoto, then they Prabhu Kudem. You say no, then they Prabhu Kudem, better, better one. So that Prabhu Kudem, they go on all the time. But you know, they tell the lie, they lie them of a sight. And the community, the school I'm attending, even my families are discriminating me some certain issue that they should discuss towards the family, they did not include me, so they make a stigma on me. So. These violations restrict them from enjoying their rights and same standards of equality like others. For example, they face a tenfold of challenges just to access education, as most institutions are not disability friendly. The major challenge most time we, we face is uh, when it comes to the lecture that is in the classroom. Of course, in our university, we are, we are still using the board, the chalk. And most time when giving lectures, you know, hardly we, we see and able to understand what, you know, the lecturer is doing, except by, you know, key listening, because you cannot, I mean, see on the board been uh, quite a story from primary school to secondary school to university. The first key challenge I face is I have a very, uh, uh, very, very huge myopic vision to the extent that we've made attempts in every eye hospital but cannot find a glance or a, a glass. So I had to go through education, through dictation, where the teacher will read and I will write till I completed my school education. So in this moment it was very tough and difficult because some teachers even uh, would not uh, do some of these things. As for women and girls, they encounter most barriers and constraints due to intersectional inequalities of disability and gender. Women are blamed for causing albinism in their children, while those with albinism are exposed to abuse and even sexual exploitation. Most time, when a albinism in a family, the male usually abandon 
the children, they abandoned the child, they abandoned the, the, even the mother. I became pregnant and the husband abandoned me, I don't know, because of my color and leave the child to me. Don't want to care about me, just leave me alone. Some people started talking, insulting all about me. Raising awareness to debunk albinism myths is the only hope they cling to. A shift in attitude and perception as a key to addressing violations among them. Memuna Conte is a resident of Tonkolili village in the northern province of Sierra Leone. The 45-year-old has been baking and selling bread to make ends meet. However, her condition as a person living with albinism has been impeding her hustle. And the strength me because one the man in Ode to let me the pikine. Me they take care of the pikine. The family I get five pikine. So now they will say I begin for do this business as small, 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 small. I mean I lead me for sell this bread here. So I can go trust the flour. I can sell. If I don't sell, I go pay back. If I can sell, I go pay back. Those packs have been there. Me, 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 so they are strained. Now some people are coming from the other side because the bread past and net are able to sell them and they make the bread because the sun is with the warm and we will see fine sun. Discrimination and stigmatization have become frequent aspects of everyday lives of people with albinism in Africa. They have no voice in society as these issues affecting them have generally gone unnoticed. It is for this reason that the Albinism Royal Foundation, founded in 2018, has been addressing the needs and advocating for the rights of persons with albinism in Sierra Leone. In 2021, the organization, in partnership with the University of Fraser Valley, launched the Leaving No One Behind research project in the country. The project, funded by Fund for Innovation and Transformation, is aimed at empowering persons with albinism, particularly women and adolescent girls in the rural regions, both socially and economically. I'm Pastor Celia Ngaiwa, founder and executive director of Albinism Royal Foundation Sierra Leone. Well, Albinism Royal Foundation is an organization that advocates and promotes the welfare of persons living with albinism. For far too long, persons with albinism has been left behind in so many aspects of life. Even, I, I normally say that, even forgotten by even our state actors and other and state players. Like for me, as an example, I, can, I normally tell people that I'm a semi orphan. So some people are asking me, um, Pastor, why are you saying that kind of thing? I say, well, I was rejected by my own families. So because of that, we do have a, pro a project in December. Every third week in December, we are in, we provide them with, you know, show them love, telling them that someone cares for them. We feed, we, we call that pro project, um, feeding christmas feeding we come with so many varieties of gifts and all of this telling them showing them love that someone care it doesn't mean living with albinism all is lost and you don't have anything to offer i can i normally tell people that living with albinism is the best thing maybe i didn't know god was preparing me for this position in the country so if I am here yeah, with the education that I had then going through these things. I believe the mass, what about the masses? Some people are more vulnerable. So we think about the widows, we think about the, the orphans, even I, like I normally say, the rejected. So we call them together, play, show them different type of in, in, in games, teaching them those to them to have within that there's someone really cares about them.
when we are doing uh, visibility studies in different parts of the country, we noticed that persons with albinism are the highest dropout from school. So that is why a, a project was born because of our findings, you know. The project was born into these findings, which is called Send a Child Living with Albinism to School. We provide them with school materials, send them to school so that they can have quality education with proper monitoring. So at the end of the day, they will be contributing factor to themselves and to the community and to the nation at large. But when we go also to the informal, those uh, uh, persons living with albinism who perhaps are find another way to navigate life uh, aside formal education. We ensure that they are trained uh, in technical and vocational skills like the weaving, the tailoring and all of these. We, we introduce, you know, um, and, and banking and finance because definitely when they have um, to go through, we call the project training of trainer, you know, the TOT. When they are going, they should know how to start their business, the skills, and they know how, how to do their business, how they should manage their business, what they should use for, um, um, for to, 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 to run their business. Because let me say, for example, when um, someone came that I want to, you, I want you to do a dress for me. Then at the end of the day, individual charge the, the, the person that this is what I want you to pay in return. But for the, you to have that money, you are not going to use that money all on your mouth or in the family issue. You need to we, we talk, the workshop train them how to save banking and finance. So when that, when you cannot start um, a business with a huge money, but with the little you have, you know, with the technique that they have they have gone through the workshop. I know if they minimize this at the end of the day, the world will be a better place for them. Me adding at the tailor department, then train me how for sure things there. We be say agreeable. We at we at the end of the day agreeable provide job for myself. They will me company car and they implement the same knowledge what I get and implement that to them. For let them be let them be self-employment. We are agreeable training up to up to 15 and above. When I was nothing, I don't have any job to do, so they don't even get, get an interest over me. But now because of my job, they come close very to me, they, co they come very close to me, interact with me, give me job to do, then I do them perfect. I experienced a lot because first, I, uh, when I was not a tailor, I don't know how to pedal, even trim the, the thread, or even sew something, I don't know. So I always see people doing this job, I look them funny, but now I am interested because of I'm part of the training now. So it's gone successful, after the six months then I am here because I don't want to sit or either leave the job just because of I'm already uh, out from that place that they go with us and then I find a place which is here then I talk to the boss that I, I, I have a passion for this job so I want to further this job they accept me The the, 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 the the end part of the needle is very, very timely. So for me to use that with my naked eye, for them to use that with my naked eye to put the thread down, but with the intervention, they provide them biofocal glasses. So the work was so easy for them. They give us art. When the sun comes, I wear it, and they give us sunglasses. That's all. They give us lotions to work. So that's all. It is an improvement I got from this organization. And they assist me in my education. Through 
our advocacy campaigns. We use the media, television, and other social networks to ensure that we raise this stereotype. And you realize many a time when a discrimination case occurs, uh, well, how do we know that the mindset has changed? Is there will be no longer silence on it when you take issues to the police. Although at times there will be negligence or oversight, but they will act on it because they also have been well equipped in their knowledge about persons living with albinism. So, you know, the voice of a uh, person with, living with the condition has been bad because now intermarriages are coming, you know, you can see the black get married to the, a person with albinism. I have a husband who accepted me. So, you see, some of the barriers have been broken because of knowledge, awareness raising and all of these things. As for my friends, those days they will not, they, will, they abandon me, but for now, but for now, they mingle, we laugh, we play, we do things in common. My hope in the future that what they have started, well, they will not stop. Because there are a lot of people that are looking for this kind of opportunity. Person with living with the condition, they are very, very intelligent. If only you can give them the opportunity, you can see the beauty and passion, creativity of person with albinism in position of trust. If they, they will come in again, empower these people, bring, you know, the, bring uh, change in the lives of these people. I believe that many at the end of the day we we we, we proud of, of the of it. These achievements are shining a light on the growing recognition and acceptance of persons with albinism. Moving forward, Albinism Royal Foundation hope to continue their advocacy and ensure no one is left behind.